Welcome back to the XR conference. Uh, we will continue in English because we have an international guest with us. Welcome, Vesna Petresin. Vesna is hi. A, hi, great to have you here. Uh, Vesna is a transdisciplinary artist and thinker. Her works are compositions of performances of sound, light, rhythm, space, movement, text and code. So we can clearly uh, see, say about her that Vesna is a true XR artist. And Vesna, you are about uh, to present us your work Immersive Opera. But before yes. you do, um, maybe you could tell us what we have to imagine under the word transdisciplinary art. Maybe you have a few examples of what you've already done. Yes. And we will see Hello. some pictures during that. <laughs> Hello everyone, uh, thank you Wolfgang for connecting us and uh, sorry I can't be with you all in Munich but uh, with these times we're going to do by proxy as, as good as we can. So uh, I very often get introduced as, oh no, you know, what is transdisciplinary and why are you doing opera? So I think it's a very good introduction to the practice and the research that I'm doing. So I suppose that it starts with being human, which is naturally being outside of a box and outside of labels. Uh, I trained in architectural engineering, classical music, ballet, psychology, yoga, uh, theater performance and design. And then I practiced in light and sound and theater and fashion, graphic and narrative design and writing and movement art, soprano, piano, immersive media. I, went, I ventured into making patterns in clean energy and water supply technologies. And, you know, it, it, it seems uh, sort of a little bit overarching, but actually this broad palette of activities has a purpose. Human knowledge, in my view, is like an ever-expanding ocean of information. And if you look at the history throughout the centuries, we have perfected, um, perfected our skills and crafts and organized everything we know into little compartments and disciplines. And we train and work really hard to reach an excellence in a single field, a specialization, which is, which is really important because specialists are needed. And that's hard enough, but with the extremely rapid rate at which we produce and acquire information today, the challenges are becoming more and more complex. And in this sense, I began my practice answering the question, how do we solve problems in a world of infinite complexities to make the workflow simple? And how can we create originally in a world that wants breaking news at all times and instant novelty? So once again, if we look back in history and the classical Greece, Pythagoras conducted one of the first reported scientific experiments while testing the relation between distance and pitch and which accidentally also gave foundations to the entire Western aesthetics. It was that important, science and arts together. In the Renaissance, geniuses like Leonardo da Vinci were making art while also doing scientific research, which then helped them to create brilliant technical innovations. Further on in the history, Bauhaus, combined artistic and technical disciplines and developed creative and production novelties and methods that were suitable for this new era of industrial design. And it is perhaps really relevant that today we're speaking again about what transdisciplinary means. It was exactly about 10 days ago that the EU declared a new European Bauhaus movement, which is actually intended to become a bridge between the world of science and technology and the world of art and culture. And the aim is to create a new European Green Deal 
an aesthetic combining good design with sustainability and bridging a lot of people's minds and hearts and questions to empower our daily lives, to empower our relation to the earth, to the creativity and how we are in the world. So in summary, you see that transdisciplinary is nothing new. It, it's been around since century. We've, we've just forgotten about it a little bit. So to me, transdisciplinary approach crosses the boundaries of industries and disciplines, connects specializations, combines different skills and industries and the viewpoints in order to create holistic solutions. So the important point is holistic. So transdisciplinary is a strategy of creative thinking that is authentic and relevant to the real world, the here and now. It addresses challenges in a systemic way. Says Brian and it's by bringing together oh, arts and science and technology in society and invites sharing and exchanging and combining knowledge. So we think that in times of crisis and big challenges, this is the way to innovate. And this is also how we can become a better social animal. And it encourages us to learn through making and through making mistakes. The mistakes are loud. So everything is about union, which is always more than one. So the connection. Great. Uh, thanks, you. So you really made the point why it's time for more transdisciplinary work, not only in arts, but also in all uh, different fields. From Pythagoras to Bauhaus. The laws of life, India. says Bryant um, McGill. Now we have dealt with opera. Before we look at the video of the immersive opera, Let's um, talk about what opera means to you. Can, can you tell us what, what opera actually means to you? Yes, it's, it's a lifelong passion. And it's a me I think it's a medium that is the closest that it gets to immersion. And immersion is a big topic when you come to new technologies. So historically, the term opera refers to an alchemical work, an opus, or Gesamtkunstwerk, uh, a fusion of senses, media, and disciplines what, that creates an immersive experience. And I think it's no coincidence that the birth of opera was actually in Venice. At the time, it was the creative innovation hub, so to speak. But this multimedia artistic format also invites new ways to imagine and create and produce this multisensory work for today's context. And that's why I love using this work opera, again, to, to rehash what it actually means. Because today we produce as creators, as consumers, we, we do a lot of multimedia content um, and formats, but it's still really challenging to engage the audience in real time. And especially now when we have all these constrictions of social distancing. So therefore, I think that the technical as well as the creative challenges are perfectly suited to fall under this umbrella of an opera. And this is interesting because in my practice, of course, it helped me experiment with um, commercial, artistic, educational, meditative and well-being experiences that I created for clients, which I can then offer to the audiences today. And this brings in our world of a fast changing need for connection, need for learning, need for saving the environment, really impacting new ways of engaging with the world and also new ways of having fun and getting together there must be a connection there must be a new format there must be a new way to connect to present to promote so i suppose that creative content today can be experienced as i love to say outside the white cube of a gallery and we can see creative content outside of the black blocks of the theater. So beyond 
these experiences, our instruments that were, even my instruments were traditionally piano, plaster and paint, but I had to integrate pixels and voxels into that as well. And this makes it more appropriate to address experiences, express experiences, especially today when we have to connect in multiple ways to create new sense of communities of experiencing together or of, whether it's for commercial purpose or artistic purpose. So my challenge is actually to respond to these new, the range, the fantastic range of new media technologies. And also I need to consider, and I think artists and creatives worldwide are reconsidering through the prism of the new social distancing restrictions, what we can present that can be interactive, that can no longer separate the creator and the audience, that creates a healthy mix, and how we can actually use these narratives that actually originated on the non-linear design from interaction, game design, user experience, that we can make relevant for the new formats and new media today. So at the same time, we're, there's also a big debate about post-human art, bringing in the artificial intelligence as a performer, bringing in uh, deep space as an environment. I started there, <laughs> learning from the first ballet in Gravity Zero, for example, and I think that uh, the performing arts experiences that I used as the platform to experiment with and to demonstrate how these new formats can be developed and how they can be developed and presented to a range of industries really focused on immersion, embodiment, sound, movement, visuals, haptics. They wanted to be combined, they wanted to be integrated, just like the old rituals, just like old alchemical works. And I basically like to call my creative research and practice an immersive opera because exactly of this synergy and this allowance of media and senses to come together in new ways. <laughs> Great. I think uh, that was a very good teaser for what comes now, because now we have a look at um, the immersive opera that you just um, talked about, why uh, you think that it's time for, for such an artwork. Let's have a look together. The laws of life, says Bryant McGill, are written into every atom, molecule and heart. We are immersed in the sweet law of unfolding mystery called life. Hello, my name is Vesna and in the next couple of minutes I'm going to show you how I develop my multimedia artistic research and practice, what drives me to create immersive opera and share my inspirations so you can perhaps use them in your practice. In my work I'm trying to take the audience on a journey from micro to macrocosm, from the beauty of science to the forces of nature beyond human control. The inspiration comes from the idea that we inhabit an endlessly rich universe in which matter is information, constantly transforming. In physics, it is said that the particles of matter assume and maintain coherent shapes as a function of specific interference patterns, with the shape effect of overlapping harmonic vibrations, like music. The focus of my practice is on cymatics, a science of the impact of sound to the shape of matter, particularly fluids. Goethe refers to architecture as crystallized music. In architecture, geometry is considered to be rhythm of numbers in space, while music is rhythm of numbers in time. Universe is an instrument responding to vibration frequencies of sound, movement, color, structure. 
even solid structures are essentially different densities of energy, continuously reshaped by frequencies of forces and fields. All matter is information. There is no empty space, even in vacuum. Every point in space or structure in time is like a fluid that is transformed by the vibrational energy of our thoughts. This brings an understanding that we are never separate from the environment, that human mind and nature are connected, and that these connections can expand through our creativity and imagination. In media technology industry, live augmented performance art is valuable for technical development, since it is often still challenging to engage the audience in real time. But this also pushes artists to imagine, create and produce work in new ways that are suitable for immersive, multisensory, responsive, non-linear narratives. Immersive media opera is a format I developed so I could bring together all my background in creating experiences. As a performance artist, writer, light and media artist, filmmaker, composer, vocalist, dancer, director. The term opera refers to an alchemical opus, work, Gesamtkunstwerk, where a fusion of senses, media and disciplines creates an immersive experience. So what is immersion? You recognize that feeling when you're lost in a game or a piece of music? When whatever's going on around you seems less real than what you are experiencing? Immersion is a full body and mind sensation of being present in an environment. A feeling of being in place with all our senses engaged. We construct our sense of being in space, either virtual or physical, through vision, sound, proprioception, that is sensing the position of our body in space, and kinesthesia, that's the sense of body in motion. In psychoanalysis, any virtual world generates a kind of a proto-psychotic immersion into an imaginary universe unconstrained by the real. Immersion is therefore an alternative reality where reference to the real is no longer relevant. Our minds and bodies respond to a situation as if it were real. And as neuroscience demonstrates, we can then no longer make a difference between an action which has physically taken place and a simulation or thinking about it. We feel that we're right in the middle of it. My work has always tried to be about expression without boundaries and so I've been learning to implement the principles of synesthesia, the phenomenon where a sensory input crosses over in our brain into a sensory output in a different modality and this led me to explore gesture to sound, sound to image, movement to shape principles and interfaces. My research typically begins with exploring cymatics movement recognition, sketching visual and sonic ideas, and also drawing from my father's inventions which are based on the principles on Tesla's diode and resonant frequencies. My libretto is typically a combination of poetry, journaling, and excerpts of scientific texts. My performances are typically set up outside the theatrical black box and in event spaces where the boundaries between the performer, the technical team and the audience are blurred. I have been investigating expanded movement, moving image and sound and have been looking for alternatives to traditional staging, typically with a back projection on a 2D screen to a seated audience. So instead, I have been experimenting with gamification of performance, of musical events, with 3D to 4D spatialization of content. So, for example, with spatialized multi-channel soundscapes and lightscapes. I have been staging participatory VR performances, 
augmented reality, mixing 360 degree projections with theatrical performative installations. I've been making virtual sound sculptures, for example, generated through dance in VR, translating sound to movement to shape. The aim of all these experiments is to create a sense of immersion, to develop this format so that I would allow the audience to fall into a piece of music or to merge themselves into a narrative. In short, to promote a first-person experience of art. As a performer and creative director, I try to remain the master of the ceremony, trying to offer the audience an engaging, transformative experience, but also a little bit like an alchemy. In this process, I am transforming myself. The laws of life, I can just repeat this. Uh, McGill, thank you, Vesna, for this uh, presentation. Um, that was really impressive. Now, before we close it, I, I have to tell you that we could have done this talk in German as well because Vesna speaks perfectly German, but we did it in English because uh, immersive worlds should be international. Uh, thank you, Vesna. And maybe you can tell us for, for the closing. Um, for you as an artist, the pandemic situation might be hard. Where can we, where can we see your um, artworks in, in real life in, in the coming weeks or months? Are there any chances to, to get this immersive um, feeling without a, a digital connection somewhere? Yes, indeed. It's, it's a very burning question for, I think, all the artists that work in the theatrical space or work with performances, live performances. And it's also a question for all of my students worldwide because, you know, teaching performers, theater, orchestral composition <laughs> is uh, difficult, uh, but we are finding new ways. So one of the things that I'm trying to set up is um, a practice and uh, an atelier in Munich, uh, in the Ruffini House. Uh, there are a couple of online performances coming up and uh, the rest is basically online. So I am a nomad, <laughs> which is a difficult definition these days because I used to be uh, based between London and, and Berlin and uh, having a beautiful um, collaborators seat in, in Amsterdam as well, um, you know, working also in the States and in Australia. Uh, but <laughs> we are just basically waiting for all, all the restrictions to be lifted in order to, to um, be able to travel. However, I think there are new ways and there are new ways of engaging and augmentation of performance is one thing we can learn from. It's one technology and format we can all learn from. So publications can be augmented. If you have a book, you can have an AR experience. Uh, you can talk online, you can perform online. It's not just on Zoom. There are many, many different ways of engaging interactively in a performance space across continents. And um, I will be keeping you posted on all that. Um, in the meantime, perhaps, um, yeah, just get in touch on LinkedIn or on my Discord channel. And I'd be very happy to set up any Q and A's, um, feedback sessions or brainstorming. Und um, yeah. Ganz schöne Grüße an München. Es tut mir leid, dass ich nicht anwesend sein kann, aber bald. There will be an exchange. Nach der Corona-Sperre, ne? Genau. Thank you, Vesna. So, everybody, look her up. Vesna Petresin, uh, connect on LinkedIn and uh, get in touch with her and follow her work. Thank you very much for this uh, short but deep dive into your work and, and the um, world of transdisciplinary art. If you are into art, stay tuned, because in a couple of minutes, the program will go on. My colleague Julie Walsh is taking over the moderation and it's going to be about how to fuse art in real life with virtual spaces and how to create art in a virtual reality. So have a great evening. Stay tuned. Thank you, Vesna. And in five minutes, the program continues. Bye bye, everyone. Danke, Wolfgang. Ciao. Grüße an alle.